What is up, everybody? It's your boy, Rogue. So, on a beautiful, finally sunny Chicago, it's Friday. And as you guys know who watched my last vlog, I pretty much kind of scrubbed my last vlog. Finished Locals um, X2, and I just left, like, got demolished by Cash Heroes, and I got demolished by Sprite Runic. And, yeah, those decks are annoying. However... I still feel like my deck list is good, so I came up here today to test out my deck list. While you guys are watching this intro, smash that like button and leave a comment to help show some love and support to the channel. And yeah, man, um, I might switch up my side deck. I'm not feeling Lightning Storm, and I'm also feeling like most of the cases where I would want to side Lightning Storm in, I would usually side in Evilly Match instead. I think that's one of the reasons why I lost against Runa, because I didn't side in Evilly. I tried to side in Lightning Storm, trying to be aggressive, and I paid for it, so... Yeah, I'm going to mix up my side deck and change it up a little bit, but that's pretty much about it, just trying to perfect the side deck. So, with all that being said, let's get into it. Without further ado, let's begin. Alright guys, coming up to round one in the tournament, ended up playing against Dragon Link. And I've been seeing this deck been topping a lot on Facebook and like different regionals and different things like that. And I know a few players in my local area that's pretty competitive started picking up the deck. So the deck is gaining popularity surprisingly. So keep those DD those um, drone light birds in your side deck because that definitely slows Dragon Link um, down a lot. He started off pretty strong making a standard build. And I'm just like, okay, whatever. I think I had, no, I didn't even have no hand traps. I literally just had a pop off board breaker hand. And I believe I had triple tax. But yeah, man, his field is massive, like really, really good. And I'm just reading everything. There's a lot of new cards, a lot of these decks like Dragon Link have that I haven't seen. So he ended on that one guy that could just negate monsters. Luckily for me, opened up Book of Eclipse. Best board breaker of the format, hands down. Card's amazing. And my whole strategy right now is just to make Wake Up Your Hero, which is why I freaking love that card once again. Like, I can't believe at one point I'm like, eh, the card's okay. Bro, that card is insane because literally it gives you another win con when they try to just go on the defense. I freaking love Wake Up Your Hero, so that's pretty much going to win me this game right here just by hitting him with a lot of life point damage. GG, no re. Coming into game two, however, uh, I forgot what I side that. Oh, yeah, I definitely sided in Droz. He's going to go first. He is going to make a big misplay. I had a handful of spells. He's going to set double anti-spell for against. I drop a turn, set my main. I'm like, anything? He's like, no. And then after I play Hero Lives, he literally started laughing. He's like, dude, I just messed up. I'm like, what's going on? I'm like, you had the anti-spell, didn't you? Like, yeah, I just... He said he was tired from work. And I'm like, yeah, I get it, man. It's all good. So I ended up popping off. Um, I don't know if... if considering if he didn't do that if he played correctly I would, if i would have won or not but hey man we take those wins i'll catch you guys in the next clip all right guys round one is over ended up beating um dragon link 2-0 um i got really lucky game two my opponent legit forgot he set anti-spell like he zoned out because he had a long day at work he told me so yeah that was a pretty fun game i did the rest of the recap um during the actual gameplay but deck feeling good it just i drew hands that was kind of like eh but they weren't bad hands, they were playable hands. You know, that's just how the road decks are. And so far, so good, man. I also want to show you guys the outside of the shop. I don't know how often I show you guys to you, but like you guys ever in the area, it's on Fullerton Street in Chicago. Um, this is the address, like over here, 5814 Fullerton. But yeah, it's a nice shop, man. Come check it out. This is the new location. Got the, it's very subtle, because I guess the windows kind of have tent. However, um, yeah, good spot, good spot to be at. So, yeah, I'm going to catch you guys after round two, man. And we're going to talk about it's a casual tournament, 16 people. Um, doesn't seem too gun ho like Tuesday was. It was really crowded on Tuesday. A lot of people aren't here because they're prepping for regional, so they at home play testing. So, um, there's a lot, of, um, lot, of, lot of really light crowd today, which is good. I don't really like those big tournaments and crowded rooms. I like to just be solo dolo in the corner chilling. Anyway, I'm going to catch you guys in the next clip, man. Y'all stay tuned. All right, guys, coming to round two of the tournament, I'm playing with my boy JoJo and his Math Mat deck. So this is a deck he's been tinkering with for the past couple of weeks, and I've noticed he's been doing good at tournaments with it. Like, he's actually won a few tournaments with it. And, yeah, it was definitely an interesting game because I haven't played against Math Max in forever. So he's going first, and I didn't really open up any hand traps once again. Lost another die roll, but kill still keeping positive because my hand wasn't terrible. And he's going to end on some boss monster and just pass. And I'm like, okay, one face down, one boss monster. Literally, I know this boss monster sends cards from the deck to the graveyard to negate monster effects. 
on top of everything. So it's kind of like a modern day, you know, the, the de type, pretty much protect the castle type of deck, right? That's pretty much all it is. The monster sound effects by everything. It, can, it has graveyard out in the gates. Pretty solid strategy for going first in all honesty. Um, I couldn't break the board and I, I just got whooped on. It wasn't nothing I could do. Coming into game two, however, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go first. Um, I don't, I didn't even side deck, so I didn't really have anything in my side deck for this deck. I'm like, well, Dark Law beats this deck, so I'm like, I was gonna go. I'm like, I don't think my list is bad going first against this deck, so I just went Dark Law, DP was going for Plasma. He did have the Bestial. Luckily for me, I opened up the Triple Tax to get rid of his other hand trap, which was Ghost Bell. And after that, it was all she wrote because he couldn't handle Plasma and DP. Now, game three was a doozy. It's a really long game. Um, we did pretty much go to time. Partially because of me, um, there was a ruling disrepancy I had. And you're going to see it come up shortly where he made access code talker when I had plasma. And the ruling was, was he able to pop? Now, I do know access code, talk, talk, access code talker tributes for cost. However, I've never dealt with that before. Usually when people have access code talk on field when I have plasma, they've never pop tributed it to pop for calls. And maybe this maybe because they just never thought about it, but I didn't know that was a play that 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 could make. So it was really frustrating. However, um after asking and looking and researching it through the judges lounge and asking people in the shop, I'm like, okay, you, you're right. However, it was like I said, epic back and forth game as you guys can see. I'm trying to break his board and plasma really is helping me out a lot. I'm thinking, oh, okay, cool, but once again, I forgot about access code talking. I did not know it could distribute itself. So next time, I definitely will get rid of a link monster, so my opponent won't be able to link climb an access code talker. So as you guys can see right now, I'm on my phone looking at rulings. I put a picture in the judges lounge. That's typically what I do because my local shop don't really have any judges. We all kind of help each other out with rulings. Um, eventually, I'm just gonna say, yeah, you got it, and let them know, yeah, you're right on the ruling. So. Um, it's coming up shortly. He is going to be able to just get rid of my plasma. I'm going to get it off the board, but it's not going to matter because I'm on follow one turn. I'm still going to win. Um, I just had too much card advantage and I'm just going to OTK right now. So I'm going to catch you guys in the next clip, man. Y'all stay tuned. All right, guys, coming to round three of the tournament. I ended up playing with my boy, Brandon and his branded Despia deck. And this was a pretty interesting game. I kind of knew he was playing Branded, obviously. So I'm going straight to the whole punch of Hero Lives, grab Shadow Mist into the um, Dark Angel Lock. Dark Angel Lock, like I said, nine times out of 10, when I'm going first, I'm not making Dark Angel only because people could be playing different decks. This meta is very diverse. However, there is enough people playing Branded Despia that um, Dark Angel is like, if you know your opponent playing Branded Despia, just go into it get a free game one because they're not going to have anything for it some people are main deck ambitious however he just didn't have it so man it is what it is coming to game two however he's going to set up a pretty powerful board that i feel like i probably could have broken but i don't know man the new branded decks are weird because they have a lot of new support like they have that omni negate trap band branded retribution like it's pretty much an omni negate then it banishes itself from the graveyard to add a branded spell from your graveyard to your hand that's nutty and it kind of makes me realize like yeah ghost bell might need to be a side deck staple um i didn't really alter my side deck because literally every round i played in it took forever so i'm gonna lose game two because like i said um i got hit with brand retribution or no the other branded card that fuses with monsters off the field and um, i completely misread it because i asked him what it did he told me what it did but like i also read it and didn't fully understand the card effect so when he resolved it, i'm like oh well, I probably could have won this game if I thought my plays through better, but it is what it is. I'm still learning the new meta game because last time I played Branded, they they didn't really have all this new support. So right now, um, yeah, it's kind of just getting crapped on because the new versions of these decks are good, and then like they're still playing floodgates like Tikaboo. Because I probably would have won Game Three if it wasn't for Tikaboo. Right now, honestly, I did stall out with um, Baguska, and this is a really good game. My camera is not even going to be able to record the entire thing; it's going to die midway through. However. I will say it was back and forth. I I was trying to come back. I thought I was going to win. I had the anti spell. I had DPE. But he is going to play it really really well. Um, and he's going to come back and get me. So I am going to lose this game. Like I said. Um, however, just Tikaboo and then all these other things. And I could have got rid of Tikaboo. But I left it on the field because it was kind of hurting his bestial play. So. It was really a mono -a mono game, but I eventually just steamed out and there wasn't much I could do, so I'll catch you guys in the next clip. 
All right, guys, so round three, round two and three is over. So I just recap really quick. I think the next round's gonna come up. Round two, but against my boy JoJo. Um, I ended up getting it. He's playing Math Mac. First time playing against that deck in a long time. Apparently, I got new support. That's really good. I was able to get it. Um, I go over to recap when you guys watch the recap, obviously. And then round three, playing my boy Brandon. Really epic game, back and forth. I won game one because of the Dark Angel Lock. Game two, a little back and forth, but he won it. And then game three, I almost won, but it got down to the wire. But there can only be one on top of Dark Rule no more one in the game. So that really sucks. Um, but my deck played good. It just, he had the outs. What can you do, right? So we're up. the last round just got called. I'm going to catch you guys um, in the next clip. So Y'all stay tuned. All right, guys. I'm going to the final round. I'm going to play with my boy Uri and his branded Despia deck. Apologies in advance for my camera. I don't know what was going on. I think because I did change my camera battery. I didn't tighten the screw on my um, camera angle twister thingy. So the camera is going to start slowly sliding forward and get off the of frame. So you guys aren't going to see game three. Not like the game three was a long game anyway. So game one, I'm starting off strong. I knew he was playing Brandon Despia. So once again, Dark Angel Lock. And that's pretty much going to steal me game one. He did make an attempt to make a comeback because he plays a lot of the new branded traps that fusion with monsters from the field and that definitely was keeping him in the game. Like I said, these new branded spells and traps are no joke. They do a lot of stuff, but luckily for me, wake up your hero, DPE, I was in there with the consistent attacks. So I got game one just because I had too much advantage and Dark Angel GG, no re right? Game two is going to be a little different. He's going to set up a strong board. I'm going to try to come back. But I'm going to lose. Um, he had pretty much cross eyed designator. I pretty much won him the game. Now, it's going to cut off shortly. But game three is going to come up shortly. I'm going to break. My open hand was really terrible. So, we'll catch you guys in the next clip, man. I did, once again, I didn't add game three because of the camera angle thing. All right, guys. Tournament's over for me, at least. Um, I lost again last round. Like, the loss wasn't even, like, the issue, right? Bruh. So I win game one because of Dark Angel, like I did in round th three against my first other branded player, Brandon. Uh, he ended this. That was a good. We had an epic game three. He just got it. Whatever. Game th three against my boy Ori. My opening hand literally was Mass Change. Mass Change, Ash Blossom, Polly. Mass Change, Mass Change, Ash Blossom, Polly, Triple Tactics. My opening hand. I was fuming because it's kind of like. I'm like, okay, if I drew a good hand and lost, I'd be like, whatever. But there's nothing more annoying when you draw the brick. The bad brick. Like, the brick where you're just like, what kind of hand is this? I know what's also annoying me about today? Maybe I just need to change my sleeves. My cars ain't really sticking, though, and my sleeves feel... Maybe I'm just going to change them just because. Maybe it's bad sleeve juju. Who knows, man? It's also the fact that it's like when I'm side decking going second against freaking branded, no matter if I play, no matter who I play against, I never draw my Nibiru's. Never. They popping off, they're doing everything they want. I'm like, where's my Nibiru? Side in three, never draw it. No hand traps. You know, side in three hand traps, no hand traps. Nevertheless, man, this is how it goes when you play Yu Gi Oh! This is why I, oh my God, I get too invested when I play these card games, man. I be getting, I be getting frustrated. It's just the form. It's just so, and then, like, you know, I lost game two because of the stupid, you know. I mean, I even though I won because of the degenerate lock, losing to, like, arguably an even more degenerate lock is kind of dumb. Now, I will say, I probably could have did a, no, I couldn't do anything because I can't special something. So, it's like, I can't even make plasma pass. Like, they need to seriously do something about that, man. Like, that's, nevertheless, man, I'm going to make this my closing statements. Um, I like my list. Still don't care about my side deck like that. Um... Everything is good. It's just uh, every dog has their day. And then in game two, my boy had his. He opened up the freaking cross eyed designator when I had to Ash Blossom for the Fusion Destiny. I thought I was going to win, but he opened up the cross eyed designator. So got my one pack. Um, and I'm going to open this up to see what I pull. Maybe I pull the Alti. Who knows? OTS 20. Uh, Ninja Grandmaster. Saizo. All right, man. So <laughs> you guys get to see me build up. Uh, upset but whatever this is real Yu-Gi-Oh man like you know it's one of them things where it's kind of like I question why I play the game sometimes only because I hate winning degeneracy and I hate losing to degeneracy 
But the game, because, like, obviously there's skill involved to a small degree when you both don't draw the degenerate combos and you play the play-by-play interacting. I just hate losing because of the way Yu-Gi-Oh! is structured, man. They really need to fix this, man. Like, the only real way to fix it is block format, but I don't ever think Konami will give us block format because tons of players are quit. But who knows, man? I'm just being salty, so... You guys get to see me be salty. Also, if you guys are interested in this shirt I'm wearing, my only Yugi's merch, you guys can get it in the description. But post your thoughts and opinions about this vlog. Comment section down below. Like the video if you're new here. If you made it to the end of the video, subscribe. You know, watch this long, might as well subscribe. Um, I ain't really got much else, nothing else to say. You know, I just wish it would have been a better game like my round three was. Because round three game, you guys, guys probably didn't see, but it was really back and forth, mano y mano. I like games like that. Those are fun. Like, I, I'd rather lose like that than to lose, not even to a degeneracy, just all spell cards. Because I'm playing a combo deck. So it's like, I, I drew every card that needs something to do something. Then my top deck, my if my top deck would have been like a freaking Stratos, uh, any monster that I could have freaking normal summoned outside of Shadow Mist. Like Stratos or Vion, I would have been good because I could have normal summoned, add liquid, play poly, pop off. Shoulda, coulda, woulda once again, man. It's your boy Rogue, and I'm signing out. Peace.